Good afternoon. It's uh, Saturday afternoon, the end of August, in fact, August 31st. This is Ron Van Oosveen from East Marsh Acres, and Patricia and I are working on our raised beds. Um, so we've got them in place. Patricia's got a liner at the bottom, so the stuff stays in, essentially. Just so all the dirt doesn't seep out over time. <clears throat> so we're doing the kind of the Hugo culture way of doing it. So we fill it with wood and scraps and branches, branches, things. waste and whatever. And then we'll come at the end next week. We'll have some um, triple mix delivered and we'll have, we'll put that on over top of it all. <clears throat> you may put some compost in there yet, but um, so these are branches uh, that we took down from bushes that were in the swale. So way over there, two years ago, three years ago. Um, and there's some more, so that's the end of it. And then these are branches that I took off of those trees there um, in the winter last year. You can see the end of a branch that has a cut off piece to it. I'll need to uh, remove the rest of it. Essentially, I need a um, chainsaw to actually get the rest of it uh, down. And then there's some other uh, dead trees or well on their way. So there's a dead tree right there. Uh, there's a, one over there. Uh, there's one right behind uh, Rachel's tiny house. There's another one over there, another one over there. You can just see the pieces, dead pieces at the top. So all of those potentially could go into uh, the raised beds. Um, don't think that they will uh, because we've got uh, all of this to put in there. And then we'll, we'll put all of the the, um, the cuttings that uh, I made when I uh, when I um, scythed the, uh, the longer uh, stuff that was here and it's sitting around as well. So you can see some of it started to uh, to break down a bit uh, on the side of the path here and then um, yeah we'll get it into shape so we'll take you along for the uh, the journey um, I'll put the other camera on and uh, make sure that it keeps uh, track of what we're doing and I will put uh, some music on and we will continue to work away um, this is a work uh, weekend, uh, the Labor Day weekend, and maybe I want to outline what we hope to accomplish, <laughs> so the plan. So this is obviously one job that we want to accomplish, is uh, get these ready for the, the um, triple mix to be going in, <clears throat> and then I will... Well, what do we want to plant in here? Yeah, exactly. So we kind of want to do some fall planting, so those things that don't do well in... in really warm weather so I'm looking to do a lot of spinach and um, Swiss chard uh, lettuces um, that sort of thing um, in here maybe some basil um, yeah do those kind of things here um, before the winter so we can have some of that because I didn't get a chance to put any of that in the in the big garden or the uh, what do you call it I don't know. I can't remember what that is yeah. called. <clears throat> herb garden up there. So that's got herbs in it. But yeah. Um, that, that's the tall piece that you see there. Those and are the what radishes. What I do is <laughs> transplant some of the herbs that are from in there into here, the ones that are, are um, Perennial. perennials. And uh, so that they'll be growing right away next year in, in the garden. And. Uh, and then we're going to also relocate some grapes that we have. Oh, yeah. Little caterpillar. They're around. Anyways. Where's some milkweed? <laughs> no, that's not a milkweed. Uh, no? One. Nope. Um, monarch? They are yellow and white and green. Oh, those ones, yeah. And it's a little bit late in the season for them. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so what else do we want to do? Yeah, so we're going to relocate some grapes that are by the shed. 
that we put there um, temporarily and we're going to put them down in here so that they can grow up the trellis. Um, so I'll have one on either side. I don't know, I don't know if cucumbers will still do okay here now. Like uh, in and my garden gardener months. was planting them. I know, so I might just do that this fall yet too. And let's see how that goes. Um, then uh, one thing, the onion row is ready. The onion row also has some, a lot of volunteer potatoes in it and they're ready. So we're going to take out that whole row and get those started to dry out in, in the garage. And our own potatoes <coughs> are actually very ready as well. And our potatoes well. should be ready. So if we've got time, we we'll might, might do our um, potatoes yet too. And uh, Maybe the leeks? Oh yes, the leeks for sure um, have to be done. We haven't done a garden tour in a while, so maybe at the end of the the day we'll the, do that. well, and not not particularly this day, but I was thinking for Monday maybe. Yeah. We can do a tour as to what's still remaining. Yeah, because there's lots of tomatoes. Um, I'm gradually um, processing those tomatoes as they're coming ready, um, and peppers. So, but they're they're slowly getting ready. Um, and then there's some eggplant growing in there too. A little bit. And yeah, the carrots can stay, the kale can stay. The cabbage hasn't done too well, so I don't know what we'll do. We might take those out. Okay. But we got time yet. <laughs> it gives you sort of an overview of the plan for the weekend. Uh, we're both recovering from COVID, uh, our second bout of COVID. Um, we think that we picked it up at a, uh, a funeral for my uncle <clears throat> last week. Uh, Trisha ended up getting it first, and I thought that I was going to be uh, ducking it, but uh, nah, that, that uh, wasn't the case. I ended up getting uh, testing positive uh, earlier this week, and I was still testing positive yesterday. So we'll see where we get to um, by the end of the week, and uh, hopefully... Um, we well, can that's also why it's a work weekend this weekend because we can't go anywhere yeah. this weekend <laughs> because um, we were I'm I'm negative now but I still have some symptoms so I it's best not to to <coughs> inflict them on others yeah inflict them on others and and so on so we're this we're gonna work together as much as our bodies will let us <laughs> this weekend it'll be slow we still have to rest yep. and recuperate from this so. At least I do. And uh, so we'll do what we can. And thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you. Welcome to Spain here again for East Marsh Acres. Uh, I thought you might want to have a daily dose of um, broiler chickens or meat chickens. Uh, we tend to call them meat chickens. Um, this is day two for them. And uh, there's a bunch that are congregated in the corner there. But most of them are down under here. themselves warmed up. Anyways, I am off to the uh, hoop house. I'll take you along and I'm there to collect yet another batch of tomatoes. So we're we're bringing in tomatoes every other day or something along those lines um, so that we can uh, cut them up and uh, get them into the freezer. Um, we do have a problem though. Uh, we're running out of freezer space very, very quickly. Um, we have this freezer and there's a chest freezer upstairs, but we want to purchase another freezer that we'll put in this general area 
Um, and uh, uh, it'll be a, the chest freeze are probably something along the lines of um, 11 to 15 uh, cubic feet or something along those lines. Um, what are you doing, Alps? Got himself into a corner and backed himself out, I guess. Um, anyways, so I'll take you along and we'll see what's going on in the hoop house with respect to tomatoes. Because uh, they're coming in fast and furious now that it's August. Or the end of August. Anyways, uh, talk to you soon. Okay, here we are at the hoop house. And uh, you haven't been in here for a bit. And it's a bit of a jungle, but not too bad. I'll take you up and down the roads in just a second. So here we have a lot of, these are basically Roma tomatoes. Uh, so they're a meat tomato. Very, very good stewing. So you can get juice and sauce out of them, etc. Um, here's another kind of tomato. Um, all of these are still on the way to ripening. So there's, there's one that I should have picked to begin with rather than catching a green one to begin with. There's another one. Um, so there's a few of those. Uh, we have lots of the cherry tomatoes coming, but most of our cherry tomatoes are actually in voluntary stage. In other words, they're in the uh, garden. And they grew themselves some seeds that we put there earlier. Okay, these are primarily, and these are the ones that are really coming right, right now. Uh, these are Paul Robeson. Quite a dark, uh, nice juicy, but very, very tasty um, kind of a uh, tomato. And there's quite a few of them that are beginning to ripen. And so we've been picking them every other day or so um, to get as many as possible quartered, roasted, and into the freezer. Right, here we have aubergine or eggplant. There's a few that are coming quite nicely, and then there's still some. Plant with flowers, so there's a flower. Here's a flower over here. So there's two right now. This one's quite large. We'll be ready to go pretty quickly. And then we've got the middle row of tomatoes, and then this outside row is primarily peppers. And we have a very, very good crop of peppers this year. Uh, don't know if you can see them very well. This is a uh, hot pepper plant that I'm not sure we're actually going to get any, anything off of it, but hopefully we do. And then there's lots and lots of red peppers uh, that have yet to change. So these are still looking green. Bells. Lots of nice sized green peppers. And we'll have to come in and make sure that we... Oh, what is this? That's a purple plant too. Interesting. Uh, we'll have to make sure that we come and harvest those in the next day or two. Right, so let me get you set up. You can watch me as I walk down the row, picking tomatoes as I go. Outside row of peppers to begin with. Yeah, that's what I got from the one row. Let's see what I get from the other side. But these are all very green. Lots of tomatoes. But very green. And those are green.
Okay, here are some red ones. Or two cherry tomatoes first. Most of the time, if they're ripe, they will come off very easily off of the vine. But occasionally they will not. doing? Hmm? What you doing, Alex? Okay, I need to get the other bowl. A few more cherry tomatoes. See from the other side, obviously. In the other bowl. Right here. in the other. Hmm, that one's stuck in there. Right, we'll leave that for the time being. Here's one that's going to come. Okay. So I'm going to take these rotten ones and they're going to go to the chickens who enjoy them immensely. And if the truth be told, fight over them a bit. It is warm in there. 
Okay, I'm going to go get the other bowl. And you can wait here a minute until I turn. Okay, off we go safariing. Back to the other side of the garden. I'm going to have to uh, bring the scythe in here and mow this down so that we can actually get from one location to another easier than what we can do right now. And here are our lane chickens. They enjoy eating flesh of tomatoes. We've got 13 birds. You can see 12 of them here and then there's one in the coop for some reason or other. Oh, she can't get out. I see what's happening. Okay, give me a half second and I will see if I can rescue her. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Uh, bird got caught in the chicken got caught in the coop because the uh, the door was down or the flap was down. And I think I'm going to pick a few more cherry tomatoes from the volunteer tomatoes here. <coughs> so a bunch of plants we did not plant decided to come up and. They did this last year too, uh, so these are different plants, obviously, but they're coming from seed, and they are giving us very, very nice cherry tomatoes. So you can see the size and firmness of these particular tomatoes, quite a number of them. So there's a couple of plants there, and then if I move up throw. So you should be seeing the, uh, the size of our our uh, carrot crop this year. They will be impressive. Here's a good example. So here's one of our carrots. Now we don't have a huge number of them because they were very, very uh, difficult to germinate this year. But the ones that we do have are very impressive. Alright, let's see if we can find any more ripe cherry tomatoes in here. A little pruning as I'm going. We'll have to get in here and, and pick the, the uh, potatoes very shortly because they are ready.
have to pick my bowl up and move up here. A lot more ripe ones up there. Getting better crops off of our voluntary tomatoes here. They have adapted to the environment such that they can survive even without us. So they have the right kind of genetic structure. And actually, the tomatoes themselves are nice and firm and larger than the, uh, the cherry tomatoes that we have in the hoop house. And they're far more productive. For the amount of effort. Which was none on our part, other than just leaving them alone. I'm not pulling them out when we came across them. And there are tiny plants. Again, as I said, we had uh, cherry tomatoes of the same variety in the same location last year. And so these are next generation. So we had some sense of expectation or knowledge that it might happen again, which I guess promotes the expectation. tomatoes is that slugs, and we have lots of those in other places in the garden, tend not to like, at least cherry tomatoes, I don't see any evidence of them here at all. Maybe because of the acidity in the actual plant itself. Well, the plant is, um, the vine is a member of the nightshade family, so it does produce toxic materials for some organisms, like us, humans. Um, and uh, apparently they're not good to be... Uh, The plants are not good to be shared with chickens either, or other types of herbivores that might like to eat the plants themselves. 
so we do not give the uh, tomato vines to our chickens. Um, so we'll be coming back. The, the carrots can stay in the ground. Uh, they can stand actually a, uh, a light frost. Um, we'll be coming back for the leek, which are here. They're looking good. Um, as I said, we'll be coming back for the potatoes that are ready. We've been picking beans, and it looks like we have to pick beans again tomorrow. I don't know if you can see those hanging. Uh, and then there's lots of purple ones as well. Just walk along there a second. You can see the purple beans. So these are greens. There's quite a number of them, even though we've picked them a couple of times already. And there's a purple bean. We find that the purple beans are actually very, very productive. A number of them hanging there as well. Um, and they taste very, very nice. There's a couple there as well. Get some more. And these are all mostly purples. Here. Okay, let's wrap this up. Oh, here are some potatoes that I pulled out. So those are our new potatoes. Those are ones that we planted in these locations here. And uh, they're looking quite good. So I'm leaving them out, letting them dry so that they, the skin can harden. And uh, otherwise they bruise very, very easily. All right. Um, and then here's where you can actually see the potatoes that we did not. Oh, there's an onion, not a potato. We did not plant. So these are actually a little bit further ahead than the potatoes themselves that you'll see a little further down. Lots and lots of grass here. Goodness. There's an onion, not a very big one. And there's lots of other potatoes as we move down the row. So we'll be coming back for those tomorrow. Um, we need to get the onions out as well. They're starting to get a little bit soft on the outside. We'll need, need to let them ripen. Uh, that is harden up on the outside. And then they can last a long, long time. Right, so most of the chickens have retired somewhere where there's some shade. They've been doing a wonderful job again. Um, I know that I've talked about this before on this blog, but if you take the take a look at the area here, um, so this was pretty weedy. I mean, if you take a look at what's going on over there, um, that's the kind of weediness that we had until we put the chickens in here. So there was one uh, chicken run that we had in here uh, several weeks ago and the weeds are replaced. Now, it's also a function of the fact that we're later on in the season, but the weeds are replaced primarily by grass. And then here was the second last, uh, or the third last uh, place that we had the chickens. And you can see that uh, I haven't mowed it in here, so I haven't taken down the really tall grass and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's a few tall weeds, but primarily again we're back to grass. And then if you take a look at the location where the chickens were right before their location right now, that's in here, and again they have basically mowed down the weeds. There's a few there that are still standing uh, that need to be, again, um, <coughs> scythed, etc. But they do a very good job in putting their manure over the land and essentially uh, tilling it to a certain extent, uh, at least at the superficial level, and uh, getting rid of the large, um, large seeds, etc. And so they've been doing exactly the same thing in this location for the last week or so, and uh, it's getting to the point where we need to think about moving them again. Um, and so where you see the uh, 
the chicken uh, fence that we'll be using. Uh, so this is the little one. Um, it has uh, seven panels of 12 feet, so 84 foot uh, um, piece of uh, fencing. We'll put it in that area that you're seeing there with a uh, little bit of the golden rods, etc. Coming up to, uh, but not including all of the squash that you're seeing in the foreground there. But we'll, we'll get to that uh, area. Oh, there's a monarch. First one I've seen in a long time. Nice. Oh, we've got a cucumber coming. Thank goodness. Yet another cucumber. And there's more, more flowers on there. Good. Um, these are uh, strawberries and um, asparagus. That's the tall plant that you're seeing here. And then there's some more peppers, or sorry, um, cucumbers, but it uh, looks like these cucumbers are about done. That one we might get a little more off of. Um, otherwise, the squash is doing very, very well. I don't know if I can show you one right off the bat, but oh, there you go. So it looks like a, an acorn or a butternut squash that's in there. And then there's lots more of those kinds of things. Many different kinds of squash as well. We'll show you all of those. Anyways, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, uh, bring the tomatoes back into the house, and I think it's uh, probably uh, pretty close to supper time. Anyways, talk to you soon. Bye.